I'd like to start off this encounter with a little personal background. Once every other month, my family and I take a road trip from New Orleans to San Antonio and then from San Antonio to Tulsa to visit my grandparents. This drive is usually a piece of cake as you pass through many towns along the way. So here comes Christmas 2015 and it's time to make this journey once more. I was glad we were going to see our parents again. My wife and the kids get to see their grandparents. I have two kids, Tyler 3 and Margot 6. Margot is a factor in this event, but I'll get to that later. We get the unfortunate news that my wife's parents' house had been flooded and they didn't want us to come. We wanted to help anyway, but they insisted that we go to my parents' house first and go to their house after. We unfortunately agreed and then we began the unfamiliar 10 hour journey from New Orleans to Tulsa. Fast forward about 4 hours, uh, we made the mistake of leaving around 7 p.m. We were on TX-77 heading to Atlanta, Texas for a break and a bite to eat. Let me tell you something, traveling on a secluded road late at night is fucking horrible. In particular TX-77. It turns and turns and you have to pay attention. We hadn't seen a car for miles and in all was really kind of terrifying by itself. Shit didn't get creepy until here. We are about 40 minutes from Atlanta. We see what appears to be a police car quite some distance in back of us, which is strange by itself. We don't think much of it. We thought it was a little odd in the middle of the night, but not creepy yet. It follows right behind us for a little bit. As we check, we weren't doing anything wrong. It escalated when he put his sirens on as we pulled over. He got out and went to my window, then the following happened. Is there a problem, officer? Your license plate fell off. Are these your children? Your daughter's beautiful. Is she for sale? Excuse me? Is she for sale? I'll take good care of her. Can I see your badge? Yes, sir. He then pulls out his gun and points at me. Give me your girl. I'm sorry, officer. Hold on. I pretend to reach for her as I nope the hell out of there. We go full speed on this little state road for as long as we can. Thankfully, the car doesn't follow us. We finally get to a pizza hut and seek refuge. We tell the waitstaff about the encounter and have no clue as to who it could have been. With no answers, we stop at a motel for the night. I am so thankful it ended there and he didn't follow us. It frightens me to think about how it could have ended and although I deeply wish it never happened, I'm glad it ended safely. This happened a couple of years ago when I was backpacking in Australia. I traveled around driving a van like many backpackers there do as it saves a lot of money with accommodation. I usually slept in rest areas, gas stations or wherever I could park. This one night, I've been driving for a few hours and started to feel sleepy. I decided then to stop in the next rest area in the middle of nowhere. Parking in that location during daytime could be a great idea, but at night, it seemed like a horror movie location. There were no cars parked there and no lights whatsoever. I know, I should park where there were more people around, but I was really drowsy. I turned off the engine and closed the curtains of the van. It was not long before dawn that I heard some heavy knocking on the side of the van. Open up, it's the police! Nothing wakes you up faster than that. My heart was racing. I was just adjusting to the adrenaline rush in my system when they repeated the heavy knocking saying it was the police. My first thought is that I parked somewhere I shouldn't, but then again, it was in the middle of nowhere and it was a rest area. Before opening up, with my mind telling me that the situation was weird as fuck, I decide to go slowly to one of the windows and look through the gap in one of the curtains. 
His car wasn't too far, but it didn't have any lights or flashing lights on. This guy was definitely not a cop. I could clearly see the shape and shadow of a guy standing beside the van. Bringing up the courage I had left, I shouted, Get the fuck away! I have a gun and I'm calling the cops on the radio. I didn't have a radio or a gun, but that seemed to faze him. I saw him getting back on his car, and to add to the creepiness, someone came out of the bushes and also got in the car. They left, and a few minutes after that, I turned on my van and drove in the opposite direction they went to. Safe to say that I never slept in another rest area that didn't have at least a couple of other cars parked. I don't know what those people wanted, but with Australia's history of backpacker serial killers, I'm very happy to be here today. This happened to my aunt and uncle in the early 80s. They were living in Austin, Texas and had attended a party in a neighboring area. They were driving back very late and at one point were driving along a very long, completely deserted stretch of road bordered by heavy forest on each side. No houses, no street lights, no the cars on the road, nothing. Until my uncle, who's driving, notices a car coming up behind them which then speeds up and gets very close to them. My aunt and uncle start talking about how weird this guy is since there's no reason to tailgate on an empty road in the middle of the night. They can also see that it's just one man in the vehicle. Then the guy speeds up even more and pulls up alongside them in the other lane. He starts yelling at them to pull over and is flashing what looks like a police badge. My uncle starts to slow down to pull over and my aunt absolutely freaks out and tells him not to. She is really creeped out by this guy who is driving a car that has no police markings and no flashing lights, pulled up to them out of nowhere and is now trying to get them to pull over just by flashing a badge. While they argue whether to pull over or not, the man in the other car is getting more and more angry, yelling at them to pull over, beeping his horn and flashing the badge, saying it's the police. My aunt starts crying and my uncle says, fine, if the guy's really a cop and they need to stop for him, then they will stop when they reach the next populated area, which will be a while. They reason that if he really is a cop, then he would have to understand their point of view. My aunt and uncle keep wavering between worried this guy is out of his mind and worried if he's a real cop and they're going to be in big trouble for not pulling over when told. Finally, they see a gas station up ahead and plan to stop there. As soon as they pull into the station, the cop speeds off, never to be seen by them again. They didn't think to try to get his license plate number at the time and were just thoroughly creeped out. They drove the rest of the way home without incident. But oh no, the story doesn't end there. It gets much, much worse. A few months later, on the exact same stretch of road, a man is rescued who tells a horrifying story which is then big news in Austin. A fake cop, flashing a badge, beeping his horn, etc., had gotten this man who was driving at night with his girlfriend on that very same road to pull over. Once pulled over, the fake cop forced the man and his girlfriend out of the car, I assume at gunpoint. I'm not sure of all the details at this point. My aunt refused to read too much about the story back then because she was so freaked out, and my uncle doesn't really remember everything in detail. In any event, the fake cop took the couple in the woods on the side of the road. He tied the man and his girlfriend to separate trees facing each other. And then he did horrible things to both, ultimately killing the woman while the other is forced to watch just a few feet away. I'm not sure how the man ended up eventually getting rescued, but it was long after the fake cop was gone. Either someone must have found the man tied up or he must have freed himself after the assailant was gone and found help. They never caught the fake cop. You see, that could have been my aunt and uncle had they pulled over their car that night like my uncle wanted and was about to, but thankfully my aunt's plea got through to him. My aunt always ends the story with, and that's why my husband always, 
always, always has listened to me. TLDR, my aunt and uncle were almost raped and killed by a man posing as a police officer.